It's in our nature to protect the ones we love, to stand up to any danger, to be strong and courageous, to always be prepared, to keep our family safe, to be the first line of defense. We are born to protect. So what you're looking at here is the gun that we basically started this YouTube channel with. And when this gun came out, the M&P Shield, it was hot, man. It was a thin, uh, concealable, very nice carry gun, all right? And we had the Walther PPS, the PPS M2 shortly after that, the XDS-45, the XDS-9 eventually. And then somewhere down the line, Sig Sauer decided, hey man, we need to get more capacity into a gun that's equal to or smaller than anything on the market. Hence, the P365 comes out. And that really changes the concealed carry market. Now we have the Hellcat. And now, my friend, Smith & Wesson, has released the new M&P Shield Plus. And this is what I think a ton of us have been wanting for some time. As a matter of fact, when I flew up to Smith & Wesson at the end of, I think, 2019, this is what I was expecting. They released the EZ series of pistols at that time. When I first seen it, I was very disappointed. But over time and using the EZ, I understood who that gun was for. This gun is for, I think, a different set of concealed carriers. This is for somebody that wants higher capacity um, in their firearm. They want a very usable and nice concealed carry gun. And um, here you go, man, 10 plus one capacity. You also get a 13 plus one, um, of course, magazine here with the extended base plate that they've now fixed. So this no longer moves the sleeve, it's stuck in place. Um, so you're good to go there. So very nice thing as far as that. It comes with a regular box, paperwork, all that good stuff. We'll just kind of skip right over that. So with the original shield, this one I think was like 20 and a half ounces when it came out. The M2.0 made some improvements on this, although the capacity stayed the same. Um, but that one was like 18.3 ounces. As of this video, I don't have the specs on this one, but I'll leave it in the comment section so you guys can check that out there. But let's talk about some of these features and then we will we'll do some comparisons. We'll go to the range and all that good stuff and uh, then tell you pros and cons at the end, of course. So we have front and rear slide serrations. The ones in the front right there are just like the um, M2.0 variant. So they only go up just a little bit and then they go up all the way to the top of the slide here in the rear, rounded off trigger guard, takedown lever, slide stop, it's all pretty much the same. Magazine release button right here, all right? It's a little bit extended now, so a little bit easier to get to. And then the texturing on the grip is actually, it feels a little less subtle than the M2.0. M2.0 was straight, just aggressive. Um, keep that gun locked in your hand. This is a little bit more subtle, so when you carry it, um, it won't rub up against your skin quite as badly. Now, speaking of carry, Guess what this is? This is a holster for the original shield. Fits nice and snug, everything's good. And it's going to work for the Shield Plus as well. So that's a huge, huge bonus there that you don't have to throw away your holsters and accessories. All of those things are still gonna work. If we flip the gun around, you still have a three dot set up here in the rear, just like the original. And then if we show you what these look like, all right, slide to slide almost identical. The Shield Plus may be a little bit wider. And then if we put them on their backs, almost identical. What you'll notice where pretty much the difference is in the magazine, where you were a staggered stack here, now you're almost coming into double stack territory there. It's just a little bit wider. It will accomplish that by taking out a little bit more of the magwell there. You can see you have a little bit more material here in the original shield. So very, very cool. Let me bring in the P365 because that's the gun that kind of started this all. Unfortunately, I don't have the flat base plate uh, magazine. I lost it somewhere along the way. It's unfortunate. It is what it is though. I'll show you the difference here though. Slide to slide. You can see the shield on the left. Shield Plus is a little bit longer. They look to be about the same width. The P365 may have a little bit wider grip, but it's not 
too much different at all. And then if I put them on their backs, like I said, this is the pinky extension mag, which is a 10 round mag. Um, I would say if we, I was just guessing with the original flat base plate, you're probably two or three tenths of an inch taller with the Shield Plus. But the Shield has never been like the smallest, lightest concealed carry gun. It's always been one of the most reliable and one of the ones that feels like a real gun. It doesn't feel like a toy. Not to say the P365 feels like a toy, but it's never compromised in its size um, because of that. They want you to know that you have a solid gun in your hand. Of course, you do have the little peephole right there so you can see brass down in the chamber and all of that good stuff with or without a safety. So you can opt for that as well. And then I'll show you the trigger, which is obviously redesigned after the shooting part of the review. Let me break it down here really quick, make sure we're clear, lock it back, rotate this down, slide this forward, pull the trigger, boom, comes off just like that. You have a dual captive recoil spring with a stainless steel guide rod, and essentially everything pretty much looks the same. So this slide will actually work on the original shield. The original shield slide will not fit on this gun. Um, I've already tried that. So there you go. Let's put this thing back together, man. Let's hit the range. We'll show you what happens there. And then afterwards, we will show you the trigger. We'll talk about that trigger and then we'll tell you pros and cons of the Shield Plus. We'll see you all in a minute. All right, so hopefully y'all enjoyed that. And as you would expect, absolutely zero issues out of the Shield Plus. We were about 10 to 12 yards from the targets um, in that video. But let me show you this trigger, man, because this thing, they went away from the hinge design and this is a good thing. So with the hinge design, it kind of started out as a curved trigger and then flattened out as we got here. And then it breaks, not too bad there. False reset. False reset, real reset. Okay, that false reset gets me every time on this gun, okay? But they've changed it now. So now you have a blade style um, trigger mechanism like a lot of manufacturers do. It's not harsh on your finger at all. It's almost flat just, just right off the rip with a little bit of over travel stop there. And then when this trigger breaks, there's the wall. Breaks cleanly. Reset right there. Breaks again. Let's check out the weight of the trigger and see what it's looking like there. I'm gonna do a comparison with the original shield too. So there's gonna be some things I don't cover here. 
Five pounds, nine ounces. Let's try that again. Five pounds, four ounces. So right, I would say five and a half pounds, probably. Five pounds, one ounces. Very nice trigger. Awesome upgrade there on the Shield Plus, man. Really happy they got away from the hinge design. A lot of people didn't like that. Um, I didn't mind it as much. I didn't mind it as much, but I'm definitely glad they went that route. The gun feels good in your hand. It's still a little bit bigger of a concealed carry gun, but it's something you know if you ever had to pull out, you have an amazing concealed carry gun. The the angle of the grip and the natural feelness of the of the shield, man. It's just it's one of my favorites, dude. And I'm so happy to see a 10 round variant of this gun. This is what it looks like with the 13 round extended, which again, you got to keep in mind, dude, the original one has a seven and eight round extended. <laughs> now you have a 10 and a 13 round extended in basically the same size gun. How amazing is that? Awesome. Awesome job there. So let's flip the camera around. We'll tell you what we like, what we don't like about the shield plus and in the video out. All right. So we got the Shield Plus, man. This is uh, this is an amazing, I think, upgrade over the original Shield for a couple of reasons. I've already touched on those. The trigger is way better, more predictable, lighter than the original Shield. I like it a hundred times better. Of course, they made some improvements on the M2.0 trigger. This is better than that, no doubt. The texturing on the grip, I really like it. It's a little bit more subtle. So when I carry it inside the waistband, um, it's a little less annoying, okay? I still like to keep a, a shirt in between my skin and, and this type of grip anyways. But like I said, it's a little less annoying. Um, pretty much closer to the P365. The P365, it's got an aggressive style grip, but it's still subtle enough. If I compare that to like the Hellcat, the Hellcat feels kind of like sandpaper, rougher sandpaper a little bit. It's very close to that, but I still, I like what they did with the, uh, with the Shield Plus in that regards. And the gun feels like a, a bigger gun. It feels like a bigger gun than what it actually is. It's a very natural gun to point. And I love carrying the Shield. I like carrying the original Shield too. I just know with the capacity, I carry the P365 almost every single day the Shield Plus is gonna take that spot for a little bit because I really think this is, this is the answer that Smith & Wesson obviously needed, and I think it's a good answer. Um, all of your accessories still work, so that's a good thing, or most of your accessories should, should still work, sights and lights, lasers, whatever you have, all that stuff should still work. So awesome improvements. The capacity, of course, that goes without saying, that's definitely a good thing, and keeping the gun, in the same size as the original, pretty dang impressive. The only thing we didn't like, the glossiness of the uh, lower, the lower frame here, I think makes it look a little bit cheaper, okay? It's, and Miss Techshot kind of pointed that out. When I look at these two side by side, the original shield has more of a flatter look, all right? More of a, more of a cleaner look, I guess you could say. The new one, it, it almost looks spray painted. Really, it does. Um, so I'm not sure why they went that route with it. Of course, it's not a cheap gun. Does it really matter? Probably not. But it's just an aesthetic thing that I wanted to point out. I like the front slide serrations. And they also extended the magazine release button up a little bit so it's easier to actuate and get those magazines out of there, which come out very freely. So I definitely do like that as well. Overall, huge improvement over the original shield. Pretty nice improvement over the M2.0 as well, especially with that trigger. Thank you guys for watching. I want to hear what your opinion is of the new shield down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.